now we're about four minutes past. I think it's probably no harm to get started, um, just so that everyone knows um, this is being recorded and any uh, slides or things we're going to share will happily kind of circulate as well after this recording too. Um, and if you have any other questions at any point, you can contact um, our DASB team or you can contact myself directly um, and we will answer any questions outside of the webinar. Uh, so you're all very welcome. Thank you so much for joining us, giving up valuable time, precious time at lunchtime uh, this afternoon. Uh, my name is Irene Hayden and I'm a lecturer at ATU for 18 years. Um, I, I came in in the Department of Building and Civil Engineering as I many years ago and I have stayed. I'm now currently the program chair on the MSc in Built Environment Regulation. Um, so we're, today's webinar really is just to centre that. Um, thanks to DASB, um, in particular my colleague who I'll introduce shortly. We managed to get this program designed um, using a steering committee of national representatives from around the country, uh, you know, from uh, the government departments as well as professional bodies and representations for a multidisciplinary uh, team. And the program actually started in earnest with its first delivery um, to a cohort of students last September, so September 22. And we have approximately 30 odd students on the program in various different guises. Some are doing a full program, some are doing smaller um, major awards or minor awards within the master's program. Um, so initially, I suppose what I'd like to do is just to go around and introduce the speakers and then it, so that you know the face and you know the names. And then we might have a little chat with each speaker individually about a different aspect related to either DASB, the programme itself or the different modules that are offered off, that are on offer on the course. OK, so to begin with, um, as I'm looking at my screen anyway, I have on the left hand side, Dr. John Scahill. John, if you might say hello, please there. Uh, you're muted. Thank you, Irene. Hello. Hi, my, my name is John Scahill. I'm uh, a lecturer in uh, ATU as well. I've been teaching there since, uh, for 14 years. I'm based in the I'm based in the Mayor campus, but I work in, in the Galway uh, Department of Civil and Building and Civil Engineering, and I teach on this program and the uh, uh, Circular Economy program and BIM and Digital. My background is mechanical and electrical building services engineering, uh, but in the last few years I have been uh, working in, in on sustainability and circular economy related issues and uh, doing some research, which I've been uh, working on uh, module development with with Irene on that. So that's my background. Thank you. Thanks very much. I appreciate that. Next, I suppose, on my screen, <laughs> Jimmy Fahey. Jimmy, would you like to introduce yourself, please? Oh, uh, yeah, Jimmy Fahey is my name. Um, I'm the program manager for DASB in, in the ATU. I'm also a lecturer in the college. I have maybe 20 years experience in industry and, and five years uh, lecturing experience. Um, so good to meet you all and hopefully I'll be able to shed some light on what DASV is very shortly. Thanks so much, Jimmy. Wonderful. Brilliant. Um, next, I'd like to introduce Andrew McElroyd. Hi, Andrew. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Andrew McElroyd. I'm the Chief Fire Officer for Kerry. Uh, I've been in the fire for many years. I'm a civil engineer. Um, I used to work in Arab consulting engineers before joining the fire service. But look, and I do quite a bit of research in fire, but look, I, I'll wait till I'm going through the module and I'll give you a bit more information then. Brilliant. Thanks a million, Andrew. And Alan Duggan, Alan, would you like to introduce yourself as well, please? Uh, hi guys, yeah, my, um, my name is Alan Duggan and um, I'm a lecturer in ATU as well. I started um, during COVID. Um, before that, I would have worked in a design consultancy for a number of years as a geotechnical and structural engineer, um, mainly on projects across Ireland, England and um, the Middle East and um, ma mainly in the, in the design and build sector. Um, so I'm going to be heading up um, the, the structures module uh, as part of this um, as part of this this program. OK. Brilliant. Thanks so much, Alan. Really appreciate that. Um, so that's an introduction to everybody. And uh, we'll get into more specifics relating to the, the program, DASB and the different modules now. I think that's the best plan of action. So um, what I'd like to do now is just uh, introduce Jimmy Fahey again. Jimmy is, of course, our DASB manager in ATU. We're very lucky to have him. And he's going to tell you a little bit about where we are in relation to DASB and what it's all about. 
Over to you, Jimmy. Thanks. You're muted, Jimmy. Is it on your mic there? Sorry, there does a little bit of a technical glitch, no harm. Um, no better fell as well to fix it, Jimmy. Whenever you're ready there, take your time. Okay, guys, I'm back. Apologies for that. No problem. We can hear you now. That's brilliant. And we can see your screen you're sharing. Thanks very much. OK, guys, so uh, I'm just here to give uh, an overview of what the Digital Academy for the Sustainable Built Environment is and you know what's involved in it. So um, I'm the program manager for, for the Digital Academy for the Sustainable Built Environment in ATU. And it's made up of uh, four partners. So the ASB team are made up of ATU, TUS, um, so TUS is um, made of Limerick and at Lone Technical Universities. And we develop new programs that are agile and uh, available to um, everyone. So the idea of this is we can pool our resources together with the likes of the IGBC and Tipperary Energy Agency, and we develop new programs um, for industry and uh, that's a little more flexible and agile for for people and i suppose irene's is probably top of the class when it comes to that in her different um sorts and diplomas and masters that she's developed so it's um, very useful so within the dasby project then we have the uh, digital skills pillar we have the energy efficiency pillar and the circular economy pillar so what, what we try to do is uh, develop them within these pillars and obviously as you can imagine um, the digital pillar, you know, has strong ties with energy efficiency and circular economy. So there is quite a lot of crossover across the three pillars and we try and integrate them the best we can and build on the experiences of um, the different uh, partners within the within the, the DASBY project itself. So who who is it for? Essentially, the DASBY project is for everyone, but I suppose um, architects, engineers, building surveyors, construction managers, um, so people that are working in industry and have um, you know a short amount of time, they can they can um, join these short courses or they can do something more um, <clears throat> more committed with the likes of a master's. But I suppose certs and diplomas um, are all available there. I suppose everything we talk about today is level nine, which is um, a little a little more um, a little more um, time intensive but um it's there for everyone uh, so the idea is you know you log on to the dasby website you can see your qr code down the bottom you can scan that or you can just type in dasby.ie and you'll see the three different pillars and you can explore the different options that are out there so today i suppose uh, the programs we'll be discussing um i really probably touch on them later um are identified here these five programs um, what I want to just mention first, the terminology for maybe people that are, you know, haven't come, uh, haven't been in education in a while, just to explain that the program is like a, a course and that's what it refers to. And then the module is, you know, refers to a subject within that, within that program. So um, just to bear that in mind. So Irene will be going through, the, through these five programs later on. The master's is um, the start and we we'll work our way down through the certs. Um, I just said I put them up on the slide there. And then um, what I wanted to touch on as well, I suppose, from the DASB point of view, this it's a five year program and we we have funding available for uh, students that want to uh, apply for the program. Or if even, you know, if it's just a, like the cert there, for instance, you know, it's 875, but, you know, there's a student pays 250. Um, so there's quite substantial funding there, particularly maybe the masters there, like 6000 masters would be you know reasonable enough, but uh, the funding the student will only pay 2250 um, So it's a great opportunity for someone that wants to do a master's um, within the DASBY project. There's a lot of funding there for it. I would say it's a five year project. Uh, so that we're in um, year, we're coming into year three. So we have a limited time left on this. So if you are considering it, I would suggest uh, log on to the DASBY website okay. and uh, have, have a look at the different offerings that are out there. But um, projects we're going to look at today that's an idea of the funding so we do have an annual review every year kind of goes through uh, a review of the funding but that's the, as this funding stands today 
it typically doesn't change that much. So um, other than that, um, contact information is myself at uh, jimmyfay at atu.e. Uh, Linda's on the call there from the IGBC. There's a general information, dasb.ie as well. And obviously there's the website, so you can contact people through the website as well. Uh, any more questions we can take at the end. And so that was a quick uh, view of what DASB does. Thank you very much, Irene. No, thank you, Jimmy. That's wonderful. And um, the, the probably and the email address for you to draw attention to is the info at dasb.ie for general inquiries in relation to DASB, um, first and foremost, and then Jimmy as well, of course, yeah, because um, there's a lot, an awful lot of people involved in the background in this programme and in the DASB project. And we were very lucky to, to have aligned, you know, um, uh, many years ago now, three years ago now, um, with our partners there through the DASB project. And that is a great resource. The website is a brilliant resource. There's an awful lot of extra you can find on there and different. Um, I'm often getting phone calls from people inquiring about this course. And I often refer straight back to the DASB website because they may need another little bit of learning. They may be level six want to go into level seven or level seven going into level eight. And there's lots of choice. That, and they're suited for people who are working. You know, there's a lot of courses there that are flexible, that are online as well. So again, brilliant to be involved in it. Long may it continue. And, and I would second what Jimmy had said, that the fee structure is uh, very uh, good. Um, it's definitely worthwhile inquiring. Of course, you have to be work ready for a study and so on as well. Now, so that leads me into uh, my presentation. I'm going to give a very quick overview of the program um, and I'm going to just start, if, I, if you can bear with me now, I'll try and share an image and hopefully this will work. Um, this is the, the fee structure, I'm sorry, the program structure for our program. Now, I hope you can see that image there that I've shared. Yes, see that. Thank you very much, Jimmy. All right, so just to, to begin, I suppose, really, this is a programme, as I say, it was envis envisaged at the start of DASB, and we had a, an awful lot of, I suppose, red tape and paperwork and a lot of discussions with the industry to get it started, to get it designed, approved, internally approved, externally. And actually, we went forward and received full K of accreditation as well. So the Chartered Association of Building Engineers were completely on board with this programme. It really fitted a remit that they found was necessary for industry. So we're delighted to, to say that the MSc is CABE accredited. Um, and now what you're looking at here is an image of, uh, I suppose, a visual structure of the programme, the way it's been written. And um, we have an amazing instructional designer, I have to name drop here, Anne McAvoy. She has been a tower of support to help us with the development of online learning resources for this programme. She designed this lovely um, image, infograph or image, um, which I think is really beautiful. Now, so what you can see on this is um, a series of semesters, years of semesters, and module titles. So the, the courses, if you like, the little mini courses that are available to industry, um, to people who are in a postgrad space uh, and so on, and um, they are there, they're all listed there. So for you to follow these images, because I put these images into the slide pack uh, with Jimmy's slides and Linda was circulated to everyone here on the on the webinar. Um, the image colours relate to the different Awards. So the full award is an MSc in Budget Environment Regulation. That's at level nine. It's a full master's qualification. And I say currently um, accredited with CABE. We have aspirations to get accreditation with other professional bodies as well. But you have to have the course running for a particular length of time in order to, to apply for those. So that's in the pipeline, certainly in the next um, one to two years. Uh, so the overall program structure, as you can see there, is broken down in a flexible or part time pathway. Um, we have delivery broken down into two and a half years, essentially, if you wanted or were interested in looking at doing a part time master's. Um, 
Within that, then, there are another major award. The other major award excludes the thesis. So if, if technical writing isn't required for yourself, for your progression in your career, or for your professional development, but you want to do a master's programme, that is at level nine. It's not a full master's, but it's also a major award at level nine. And that's the blue box, which is the postgraduate diploma in science in built environment regulation. And that encompasses 60 ECTS credits on the programme. Um, next to that, we have three minor awards. They are unclassified awards following our guidelines from academic affairs in ATU. So they are uh, awards that are at a standard of level nine, but they will be considered by industry to be um, certificates, you know, so they will be um, level nine at a minor award. Unclassified basically means pass or fail. So it's not really about grades. It's about getting the qualification, identifying the learning, having the learning accredited and having that assurance going back to industry, to your clients, for even your indemnity insurance for practices that you have training at level nine in these particular areas, which I think is very important. Uh, we are in a, a very onerous industry in, in the built environment. We have to be mindful of these things and very cognizant of upskilling and professional practice as well. Um, so within those, then we have three minor awards and each of them involved uh, 15 ECTS credits or 30 ECTS credits. We use credits um, because that's the industry standard in higher education. They essentially break down into five and 10 credit modules. And you can see them outlined there on the left hand side uh, across semester nine, 10, uh, and again over years one and two. Now this is the proposed um, delivery for part time, and it is the current only delivery method we have for this program uh, for the year, the academic calendar year 22-23. Moving forward from September, we are in a position to offer a, this as a full time program as well. So I have a slightly different diagram to show you when we get into that. I'll show you that, that diagram, but it would be very easy to follow when I talk through this one, what, what's mean, uh, what we mean by these diagrams when you start to look at it across both of them, it's easier to read. Um, now to talk through the actual modules themselves, as I say, they are either five or 10 ECTS credits. Now, what does that mean? Um, apart from the thesis, which is a larger credit uh, package, the thesis essentially is, is bringing you up to the academic rigor associated with a master, a master in the area of built environment regulation. OK, so it, it really is very academic. And I'll invite my colleague, Dr. John Scattle, to speak some more about that in, in a short while. Uh, within the modules that are taught, they are all five or 10 ECTS credits. A five credit module essentially means 100 hours or thereabouts of uh, learning has been accomplished. Um, and that breaks down on the ground to a certain number of taught hours a week for a semester, for one semester. And we follow an academic calendar in ATU, as all, I think, universities and IOTs and TUs do. Our semesters are 13 weeks long. They run from September to January. And again, this the next semester following on, generally around um, end of January time to May thereabouts, something like that. So the 13 weeks in two blocks across one year, one calendar year, or one academic calendar year, which tends to be from September to September. Um, so within that five credit module, for example, and I'm just looking here at the top row for semester nine, there's a fire safety module, which Andrew will outline uh, in shortly. Um, the, uh, that's five easy test credits. So that requires two hours a week contact time on average. Um, those two hours are taught predominantly online and they are scheduled at a time to suit a working cohort. So if you are working in industry or you are in a position where you're working part time or you want to study, uh, you can study full time as well. Of course, there, there is that option to do this that way as well, if you prefer. Um, but the, uh, the, the five credits breaks down to two hours a week on average for the 13 weeks where you're being taught online. Now, we have introduced a blended aspect to this module because our uh, surveys back into industry, uh, the preference really was for a learning style that encompassed blended learning. So what that means is essentially 
we have to do a little bit of face to face learning as well as the online learning. And generally, the resounding feedback I've got from people who are on the course already was that it's absolutely essential to meet their colleagues in the class, to make faces, make friends, to chat about the coursework, to chat about their assignments and to meet with the lecturers as well um, and ask those questions, those awkward questions that are very difficult to ask and answer when you're online. So what we've done this semester, and hopefully this is our precedent moving forward, is that for each of those modules, there would be a requirement, if at all possible, to try and come into Galway to go on campus for one Saturday a semester. OK, now that would be per module. So each module okay. would need to have somebody there, you know, at least um, it, to have you there. So it might end up being two or three Saturdays a semester, essentially, if you were doing the full MSc programme. And we can get into the nitty gritty of what Saturdays and all that sort of stuff by email later on. We will definitely tie down dates and I would have those available if you were thinking of planning ahead for the year ahead or the next year or two ahead. Once um, ATU issue our uh, operations calendar or our academic calendar, we'll be able to tie down dates for those Saturdays pretty fast. OK, so hopefully that's as flexible as we can manage, really, given the technical nature of the course and the different content there. And, and just to read through the different modules, so I suppose to step back into what they are and why they're there. Um, with our steering committee, we devised a way of breaking down particularly the, the building regulations into bite-sized pieces and have them at that level nine standard, have the learnings um, assessed at that standard. Um, so we're reading across semester nine in year one, we have a module called en Energy Conservation, which encompasses technical guidance document L, the two of them, um, a little bit of F with the crossover of F, J, C and D. It also touches on sustainability, um, including that embodied carbon and the circular economy. OK, the next module is fire safety module, a small module. Again, it's a, that was two hours a week on average online between five and eight o'clock at some point in the schedule, either Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday or Thursday. And that that particular module only looks at dwelling houses, at least at the moment. That's the way it's currently designed. What I forgot to say, actually, was for the 10 ECTS credits, what that means in terms of contact time is it would be about four hours on average online learning classes that would be synchronous. So they're delivered live uh, so that people can talk and engage with the material and ask questions about the material as well. A, a big part of this is peer learning. And that, that was hinted in the title that I have behind me. You know, it's peer to peer learning. There is an awful lot of wonderful cross pollination of learning that's happening in the cohort because people are coming from different disciplines. There are people who are in industry a very long length of time and they have an awful lot of learning that they're very happy to share and network and kind of socialise from that perspective. It's very technical. The discussions that we're having online are always very topical and current. We're talking about current regular changes, circular economy, uh, body carbon, you know, uh, emissions, uh, that sort of thing are, are always coming up in conversation. So it's a wonderful experience to be involved in that and to actually listen to the industry experts, whatever their disciplinary might be, because everybody contributes and everybody adds value to the learning. So that's very important. I suppose, from our perspective and from your perspective, that your learning is growing and it's escalating as you go through the course. The other modules then in the part-time delivery and that are currently being delivered right now, semester 10, are a services module. And again, it's about uh, really understanding it uh, to a competent level. So we're looking at E, F, G, H, J and the crossover with materials workmanship D. Uh, fire safety, the second fire module, again, relates to buildings other than dwellings and an FSC submission as well, which we're very lucky to have Andrew McEnwright, um module leader for that those particular modules. And we're very lucky there in that regard. Uh, and then semester nine and ten in year two, the other modules which will be commencing for the first time in September um, 2023 are the introduction to legislation for the built environment, structures module, uh, which encompasses technical guidance document A, with a little bit of crossover with CD and touching on euro codes and the circular economy. Um, and then semester 10, access and use. So looking in a deep dive 
a part M being K in relation to uh, commercial stairs, uh, access stairs and DAX, you know, looking at DAX and the requirements there and universal design. Um, so um, with that module, along with a good few of the other modules, where we need to bring in expert speakers from industry, we are uh, uh, absolutely set up wonderfully with DASB to be able to do that. And certainly some of those technical modules um, we have had expert guest speakers in. So, so far, for example, we've had um, an energy assessor, um, you know, we've had an acoustic engineer and so on. There, there's an awful lot of, of great industry experts out there who are more than willing to share their knowledge with the cohort as we go through those different documents and guidelines uh, in compliance for compliance, with the understanding of what compliance means in the Irish regulations. The very last module there, the top module, is built environment research, which sets people up then for the thesis module, which is the built environment thesis. Um, now, so I'm going to stop sharing for one sec and then share again. I have another diagram and this won't take a second. This is the full time program overview. As I say, we are in a position, thankfully, to be able to offer this this September. Well, that does not want to move for me there. And what that means is if someone were in an undergraduate program, perhaps finishing and graduating this June and wanted to continue on to do a master's program, this is a viable option for you to look at. We've definitely got a small number of people who are in the current cohort who would have very much liked to have done this program full time from January. Unfortunately, we weren't in a position to offer it um, at that time based on the numbers of applicants to so say we have plenty of people on the course, uh, but we also need to make sure we have the right people lined up to deliver the modules. So the expertise and uh, we are actively recruiting and have been and will continue to be if necessary. So the, the full time option would be essentially doing the taught modules all together in one semester. Um, so you can see here year one and year two are indicated on the left. Year one is a full year. OK, and it's 12 months full time. Um, if you like, obviously, we, we don't teach through the Easter, through Christmas and throughout the summer. There is a gap in the, in the studies then. And the taught modules are available, uh, are taught in semester nine and ten. They are identical to the last diagram um, and they are taught, just as I said, the majority of it online uh, between five and eight o'clock in the evening from Monday through to Thursday uh, on average. Um, and we would have a blended aspect with blended on campus learning for tutorials, for interviews, for project work, for group discussions, whatever we need to do, really, depending on the module on a Saturday per semester per module there about something like that. And the, the very last semester there again is only uh, one semester long. So in total, the full time delivery is 18 months. OK, so I think that, that concludes my presentation on the programme. Uh, it'll take a bit longer to speak through than I appreciate it. So thanks for your patience in waiting. Um, what we'll now do is maybe we'll look at individual modules and I'll, I'll allow each of the module leaders, who basically are our lecturers appointed through ATU, to talk a little bit about their module or I might ask them a few questions. And if you can think as, as people joining us here of any questions, please do let us know um, and maybe put them in the chat and we can go through them at the end of, of this little round table chat. OK, so I'm going to start, I suppose, with um, Andrew, Andrew McIlright. Andrew, if you wouldn't mind, um, just switch on your microphone there and I invite you to talk a little bit about your two modules. And again, I have to say, Andrew, it is absolutely brilliant to have you involved in this programme. And we feel really lucky. We had a, a trouble getting appointed, anyone appointed for, and you did step in, you know, with absolutely no warning at all and no forewarning. So I do appreciate that. Um, but it's fantastic to have someone with your industry experience and your seniority in industry uh, and actually your lecturing experience, you know, involved in this programme. So uh, I'll leave it up to you there if you would like to maybe just chat a bit about the two modules that you deliver. Thanks, Irina. I'll just pop a couple of slides there just quickly. Yep. <clears throat> OK, so just, just quickly, I suppose, um, normally when you look at a module, I suppose um, a, a lot of what when you look at a module and when you think is it going to be useful to you, I think the, the, the lecture that's giving it, I think, is quite important. And I think you're very lucky to have all the, the great lectures you have. So 
I just threw a couple of slides in as to my background, which might be just useful for people listening in in relation to the module. So excuse me <laughs> and see. So you just very quickly, the civil did fresh interview for chartered engineer and so on. Part three exam for structural engineers. I did a master of engineering of structural framing of historic buildings. So that's a bit of structural expertise. Then worked with consulting engineers for 13 years, Paul Tumi Associates, and then, then Arab for quite a number of years. I did underground shopping centres, three storey gas rig design, tall buildings over metros, chemical plants, bridges. So quite a bit of, of structural experience because really fire engineering design, the majority of what we do is building, building related. So it's very important to have a good understanding of building design. We've done quite a bit of high court expert work, you know, crane failure analysis, that type of thing. And I do a lot of fire engineering analysis of gas rigs, hydrogenation buildings, and so on. So that was my bit in consulting engineers before I came into the fire service. And over the years, I've been in quite a lot of committees as well on competent committees, and euro codes, NSCI committees, and on fire, and quite a lot of accessibility as well work. I was the Irish expert on cost action, FP1404, fire and bio based materials. This is very much linked into sustainability. So we do quite a lot of we do quite a lot of research in fire and timber and the combustibility of timber because that's one of the key concerns. Um, I'm the National Building Control Office kind of training committee. We won a number of excellence awards from the National Disability Authority for work I did in Cork County on our main county hall, 17 storey building. We won a number of wood awards, nice rookie awards. Um, we're currently involved. I, I also lecture with MTU in, 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 in Cork and Munster. And Monster Technology University, and effectively we're doing research at the moment with NUIG in Galway uh, on cross laminated timber multi story building work, and that's a kind of a four year project. Um, I supervise some projects with them to you as well, primarily fire, structural engineering, timber, that type of thing. Oversee fire testing kilns and the bomb calorimeter in MTU, which is fire testing work. So the photograph there on the bottom right, that's actually. Um, Sometimes they, they, they take old, old joists and they might take out the centre core of them, put in a number of um, bars with epoxy and then a new, a new leg, let's say, into the wall. Now, when you test that under fire, just out of interest, the um, glass transition temperature is very, very low of the epoxy. So you're very much relying on the timber to insulate it. And if that, quite often fire design isn't done, just a cold design, put it in and you don't realise it'll fail in fire. And I'm also the Chief Fire Officer, Officers Association representative on the Government Fire Safety Task Force as well. So just to give a very quick brief. What I'm doing at the moment as well, I suppose we've quite a number of staff in Kerry, with 10 kind of engineers doing fire, fire work, 10 fire stations. We do fire safety certificate um, work on, on all, all the, uh, what would I say, on the various projects happening in Kerry at the moment. Uh, and that's one of the projects in the modules, which I'll talk about in a second, is the fire safety certificate. So I try very much when we're going through all the modules, I try and give people the background behind the, the actual regulations and how they can be useful. And, and I very much want to try and encourage the students to have an understanding of what they're doing, because uh, it, it is a life safety code effectively, it's so that they understand what they're doing rather than just know, know it. And we do disability access certs obviously as well. We do inspections of buildings, building control inspections and fire inspections. We license kind of more dangerous buildings. We enforce energy performance regulations. We're market surveillance um, officers that say for construction products regulations. We do community fire safety and obviously we're involved in major emergency management, the guards and HFC and so on. So just quickly get that out of the way. So, so lecturing then, I suppose I've been lecturing for 25 years. Uh, building regulatory engineering, these are some modules we put together ourselves, let's say, which I primarily lecture on. The building regulatory engi engineering one is, is we cover all, all aspects of, of building control engineering. Um, and I do another three modules then on first principle fire and prescriptive fire. And then obviously, we've I've, over the years, I've done advanced structural analysis, structural analysis, and mechanics, and so on. So that's just a bit of background. Now, the lecture in ATU, which is fantastic, as you'll see in a minute, that, that's the real kind of um, core of what people do, what fire officers do, and also what consultants do. So I'll come to that in a second, but that, it, it's very, very important that those modules you are doing at the moment, I'm delighted to be involved with them. And I obviously lecture for Injuries Ireland now and again, and our own national director, part of the government, and so on as well. 
getting out to the to the ATU, I, I know I took a long route to get here, but um, semester one, we look at the building regulations um, on dwelling houses, and it's broken into five key sections, means of escape, linings, compartmentation, space separation, and, the, and kind of fire service access, and use and water and so on, and quite a number of appendices. Now, so each one of those has a requirement. In this case, dwelling house should be so designed and constructed that there's early warning of fire and adequate means of escape to a place of safety. So that's the legal piece you want to comply with it by law. And if you follow the same guidance document, you've got what's called prima facie compliance. Whereas if you do a different design, you have to prove equivalence. Then in semester two, then we look at the same guidance document B 2006, which was amended in 2020 with a few small amendments about flats. And there's a new version of that draft at the moment. We just commented on it yesterday. Comments have to be in by the end of the week. We put quite a number of comments in. Um, and effectively, that's going to double the size. It's about 180 pages at the moment. It'll double to 324 and something like that, with the same five prescriptive requirements and appendices. Um, and so, so, so that's really the core of what we do. We cover the prescriptive element in, in ATU. Just a couple of photographs just out of interest. So this is kind of what we find when we go to a fire. Um, roof burnt out. You can see that, the, that that's hardly burnt internally because all the heat went out through the roof. And, and as part of the lecturing series, we saw a number of videos and photographs and examples just so people can see and uh, get a better understanding. And you can see the cylinder down the bottom left hand corner has been burst apart because obviously under heat, the metal gets much softer, pressure gets higher and, and the thing explodes. And then the structural steel, you can see how it goes all over the, all over the place, let's say. So just because it's non-combustible, um, you know, it, it, it still still fails, whereas timber after fire can actually last potentially quite a bit longer. And then the doors, similarly, panel doors, uh, you can see there that it's, it, it, it breaks through very, very easily and the panel is very, very thin. And that's it, OK. No, I'll just kill that off. Sorry for that, Irina, it's a bit long, but... Not at all. A bit of background. Good, really good. And it's lovely to see, yeah, you know, your background is brilliant. It gives great context to the programme. Can I ask you, Andrew, one question uh, before we move on to the next module? Presumably, as the new technical guidance document, B for fire, for buildings other than dwellings, once that comes on stream, that the delivery of the prescriptive side of, of your module will update. So uh, people might be interested to know like, what way you're going to go with that. That that's something I just given. I gave a small bit of thought because I suppose you, you must remember that the prescriptive points to multiple other documents. Do you know what I mean? So you need to bear that in the back of your mind. Um, the reason it's got a lot larger is the means of escape before points you to other documents. It doesn't do that any longer. It's absorbed it all now into the one document. Right. So 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 effectively, what could be done if 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 it suited the, the department and your program is that you could because it's going to be twice the size. You could actually have part one and part two of fire, so you could cover dwellings plus some, maybe the means of escape piece of the of the commercial one, and then finish it in the second module, a bit like it used to be years ago over a full sem two semesters. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I mean, at the end of the day, we'll have chats between ourselves. We'll figure that part out. But as soon as we suppose we're in a place where the industry has changed, where the regulations are updated, the TGDs are updated, we'll be able to move with that because we're quite an agile program, really. Yeah, that's great to know. Um, and certainly it's a place where I think everyone working in practice is going to need that upskilling and that training. So it's, it's wonderful to have you on board on the team. So thanks so much, Andrew, for that. Really appreciate that. Really interesting research, actually, as well in the fire space and structure space as well. And great examples of collaboration across universities and TUs. So keep that up. It's wonderful to see. Fair play to you. All right. Mm. Thanks a million. Now I'm going to maybe uh, introduce Alan Duggan, Dr. Alan Duggan. Alan, if you could switch on your microphone there. Um, we might have a, a chat about your module. OK, and um, so we're very fortunate as well to have Dr. Alan Duggan on our programme. Alan is the module leader on the structures module, which is going to commence this September 2023. Alan, you're very welcome again. Would you mind maybe telling us a little brief outline about the module, please? Yeah, um, I'll make this um, short and sweet. 
Um, so yeah, the structures module, it's, um, it's a five credit module. Um, it's going to focus on structures um, the Euro codes, uh, building regulation, building regulation A, uh, part uh, technical guidance document part A, with it's, it's going to be a specific focus on dwellings and other small buildings and how it's going to work. It's it's a one semester module, so it's going to start from the bottom um, and going up. So we're talking about desk studies, site investigation, site preparation and foundations all the way to the to the roof of your of your structure and how to be compliant with the euro codes and the building regulations at, at each stage in construction um, in particular part a but also we'll be looking at part uh, part c and uh, part d of uh, the technical guidance documents so we will be discussing things like loading um, so wind loads snow loads uh, imposed loads um, you'll see that part a deals mostly with masonry and timber roof so we will be focusing on uh, those materials but we'll also be doing some kind of scheme design, simple scheme design. So we'll be doing um, small designs for timber, steel, concrete and some masonry elements. And at the same time, giving you kind of a broad understanding of also the Euro codes, which structural designers would use uh, on a day to day basis. Uh, for example, we might look at designing, um, let's say, a hollow core slab uh, or a steel beam, but looking at it very simply. Um, also, I will be touching on kind of modular building. We'll be doing a little bit on that um, and something that uh, structural engineers also do quite a bit is uh, building surveys so kind of wall tie testings uh, crack monitoring uh, maybe underpinning and throughout this module uh, from from the very first so this is going to start in September it's going to go uh, through to December so throughout the module module I'm going to give, be giving you knowledge on how to make sustainable structural choices okay for the circular economy um, it's all going that way. So all the way along, I'll be teaching you little bits about how to make sustainable uh, structural choices. OK, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to teaching this module. Um, I'm going to be working uh, on some more material over the summer and, and hopefully to make it kind of a, a challenging yet enjoyable module. Um, I already have two guest speakers uh, lined up for, for this module. Uh, both are structural engineers with a lot of experience and have a lot of uh, knowledge on, um, on BCAR. Um, just to make sure that just to one thing I want to just to say is that the goal of this module isn't to make you kind of a structural engineer. OK, you need a lot longer for that, but it's to give you kind of an a, appreciation of the, the speciality, uh, but also to kind of understand the, the basics and to be able to ask kind of the, the right questions of the structural engineer so that you can make sure that the, the structure is compliant, but also determine if kind of sustainable structural choices have been made all the way along. OK, so it's to give you really the understanding of what the structural engineer's job is, but to understand the basics. OK, um, I might leave it there. I, I don't want to go too much into 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 the details, but that's just a broad outline. OK, that's wonderful. Alan, thank you. You kind of got my question ready. <laughs> You've <laughs> answered it fair play. That's too. good. Um, so you've guest lectures lined up and that's brilliant. And you also mentioned about uh, modern methods of construction and you were touching on that as well in that particular module. So again, that's really helpful for people to understand that there are people in industry working in those spaces who might be interested in doing your module and that they will be able to contribute and share their experiences as well, no doubt, as, as has happened in the modules that they've been delivered so far. So again, that peer to peer aspect would be great too. And you, you've also covered up my very last question was relating, I suppose, more to when to call in the experts, when you need to appoint the structural engineer, how to advise whoever it might be, or if you're digging in the ground and you find a surprise you weren't expecting, you know, um, it, it's great to get that ground work done and covered off really well. So thank you, yeah, Alan, that's brilliant. Looking forward to it. I think everybody's in great hands with you as well. Thanks very much, Alan. That's Appreciate it. Okay. OK, now I'm going to uh, go back and introduce, uh, reintroduce Dr. John Scaffold. John, if you're, you have your microphone on, that's brilliant. John, thanks so many for joining us again uh, for this webinar. Uh, John is actually DASBY manager as well. Uh, incidentally, he's, he's uh, um, a cornerstone as to how this programme evolved to begin with. If it wasn't for John's input, and constant uh, uh, good counsel. I don't think it would have got off the ground. So good on you, John. Um, John, would you like to maybe say a few words to anybody who's thinking about doing this programme, what they might need to think about in terms of research and what the research side is about? Yes, I will. Uh, thank you, Irene. Um, 
and I'm I'm very glad you did take uh, take my, my 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 suggestions in relation to this program. It's great to see it here. So, um, so thank you everyone for joining today. I just give you a little bit of background on the research module. Um, as Irene said earlier on, it's the capstone module. So basically. Once you've sort of had an opportunity to uh, engage with the material and do all the taught material um, and all the great material that you're going to be uh, exposed to with with Irene, uh, Andrew, Allen, and all the guest speakers, you can you then have a, a really good uh, basis of, of knowledge on which then to to just, uh, to explore a, a research question that you're interested in. I think the interesting thing about or the the main, the most interesting thing about the research module is whatever you're interested in yourself in relation to the building regulation. So many of you will come from different backgrounds and you might have particular interests. It could be in relation to fire or some element of structural engineering, or indeed it, it, it could be to do with the circular economy or how to digitalize the, the whole element of building regulations. And I know that that's ongoing with BCAR and all that, but there's always scope to look into to more and to research new areas. So it's a 30 credit module. So it's the biggest module in the in the program. And uh, it's it's designed to be done over one semester on, on a full time sort of basis. Uh, I've, I've just shared my screen with you there in relation to sort of what the module descriptor is. And I'm just going to go through this very briefly. Just the learning outcomes are what you're expected to do once you've completed the module. So it just gives you an idea. Critically evaluate current problems and insights. So you, you, you develop your evaluation skills, conduct literature reviews, uh, you know, demonstrate problem solving and reflective thinking in, in relation to the literature. Design, and this is suppose the next ones are the most important, design and conduct investigations, experiments and, and um, simulations to analyze and interpret data on whatever topic you decide to investigate. Obviously, the purpose of this is to do some carry, uh, formulate a question, carry out some research, and then uh, rigorously academic, using academic, academic rigor, uh, analyze the problem and contribute to the development of scientific knowledge in whatever area of uh, the building regulations that you decide on. As an output of this, you will be writing a mini thesis uh, which would be about 15,000 words, and you'll also be requested to uh, synthesize a, a, a paper as well. And one of the other outcomes, of course, of this is that you will be able to disseminate and debate what you have uh, explored and learned with your peers. So that really is the kind of overall aim. It, it's The research project is a two-stage process. As Irene pointed out in the earlier slides, there's a five-credit module which sort of introduces you to the concepts of um, research and I've just flipped up here what, what is required in that module so just the idea is that you do the, the short module the five credit module it gives you an idea about you know what's required for research and gives you some of the skills to start thinking about your main project because it makes a lot of sense that when you finish the, the, the taught material and you're sort of starting to think about your, your research project, you then do this short module, which is pretty easy to get through, and it gives you an introduction to the skills that you're going to you need and use in the larger module. So introduction to academic research, uh, research professionalism and ethics, design and plan, how to plan a proposal, how to carry out a literature review, how to do research design, collect some data, and some introductory stuff on data analysis and the structure of academic writing. So they will all give you these skills. And I think in an ideal world, I think myself and I would be hoping that when you've done this module, you probably will have a really nice idea about what you would like to look forward to or, or to look at in your in your um, in your 30 credit module. Now, of course, it, it can work both ways. You might find out you might find something. And then after doing a little bit of research, you might say, mm, actually, no, I don't want to do that. I want to do something else. So it will be a development uh, process. Uh, and so just to get back in relation to the way the program is delivered, um, this, these again are, are the, the items that are very similar. This content, which I spoke about earlier in relation to the five credit module, it's quite similar. It's obviously more detailed because you've got 30 credits. Um, the way that this module is carried out is over the 13, the 13 weeks you will be doing uh, a workshop a month and a circles meeting a month, which basically means where you meet your peers and talk about your research activities. Uh, on a weekly basis, you will have a half an hour of dedicated supervisory time. With your research supervisor who will be appointed and we will try and appoint the person to be as close 
as closely aligned to whatever topic you choose. So if it's a structural one, obviously it might be Alan, or if it's fire related, it, it could be Andrew, um, or building services, it could be myself or Irene. So that, that's the way that's developed. Um, I, th I think the best part about this is you, you get to sort of find an area that you're interested in. I think for any research project, you need to be interested in it. And once you're interested in it, uh, in, in finding you know a question that you can answer and contributes to the to the literature, but also to your profession and your professional development. Of course, once you finish this 30 credit module and get your 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 uh, your, your master's, um, you, you get your master's degree. So that's the, the nice reward for completing it. Um, I think that's pretty much all all, all I, I need to say, if, unless you have any questions on it. Well, thank you very much, John. That's great. Um, I, I suppose um, I'm just uh, looking at the time. We are running tight time as well. Uh, what advice would you give to anybody who is interested in doing the research but didn't know where to start? Like they're thinking about doing the program, they have an idea, something that they're really interested in. I mean, is there any place that they could start? Um, well, I mean, the, the first thing is to do a, li a little bit of basic research yourself on 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 sort of getting you know finding out what's happening in in the area itself. I mean, you could do a a basic literature review um, in the library, or um, possibly the easiest thing, although I'm not sure everyone would 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 would, would thank me for it, is to uh, find a lecturer who is particularly knowledgeable in that area and 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 just uh, you know maybe tease it out with them a little bit because. You can find in five five or ten minutes with someone who's very knowledgeable on the area. It, it it can answer a lot of questions that you you might spend a long time. I think that the main thing is to find something uh, is is to look at what you're interested in yourself. Yeah. That that I think is the main thing. And once you find that, find out why you're interested and follow that up a little bit. See how that broadens out, and then. Um, you know, I would suggest that you you do a little bit of literature review. Um, we have very good library facilities, and it's it's. Um, once once you're you've been shown how to do a literature review search or, uh, it, it's quite an easy task to carry out but i think that that's the main thing is to do a little bit of background but more than anything choose a topic that you're already interested in you don't have to be hugely knowledgeable about it you just have to be interested the whole point of doing the 30 credits is to is is to learn is to learn something and, and to become an expert or become uh, to develop expertise in that area Brilliant. Thanks so much, John. That's wonderful. Thank you for that synopsis of the, the research modules on the programme. Um, I, I think we're out of time and, you know, I, I'd actually wanted to say a few words about my own modules. But um, if anyone were interested, I suppose, because we're out of time in learning a bit more, finding out a bit more about um, the energy conservation module, uh, essentially we'll go through in deep detail technical guidance document down for dwellings and buildings other than dwellings and we do a deep assessment for a dwelling house of your own choosing and um, that exercise is very well received by the first cohort of students um, and in the services module I focus principally on energy uh, conservation and uh, renewable energy sources but also the, the services provision required for a nearly zero energy building. So the, I have expert speakers who've come in to talk on, say, sound engineering, but also um, mechanical ventilation and recovery systems, um, you know, in the context of what the scope is available, is there for, for TGD, and the various different technical guidance documents. Um, and we look at, um, you know, sizing heat pumps and just generally kind of the the uh, services requirements of drainage. Uh, we looked at uh, regular drainage systems, but we're, we're also looking at uh, sustainable urban drainage systems, rainwater harvesting systems as well. So there's a nice breadth and depth to it. And that particular module, as the other one is, it's all centred around project based learning. So looking at a project you know, that you're using it yourself in practice or I you know, can supply one or, you know, we can kind of come up with one together or, you know, in the services module, because it's a shorter module, I kind of supplied the exercise for the class with a bit of variety in it. So everybody has a unique project to work on. They all have different um, areas and different bedroom numbers. And we're looking at 
community dwelling houses and, uh, and that sort of thing. So uh, th there's an awful lot more. It would essentially comes down for some of those monitors where we need the expert lecturers to come in. We do source them from industry and we get them on board. Uh, and I think that that's the supplementary piece that we need to, um, as we have Andrew's already already um, uh, there. But for some of the other areas, we definitely need those extra people in to give those expert piece, uh, you know, and, and we intend to progress that and develop that into a larger group of people as well. Um, so I think that that about wraps it up, really. Um, I, do, I just check in the chat to see if there was, I know that there was apologies um, from Jimmy, because he's a class to go to. And, uh, you know, a, a thank you, Billy, there for the thank you in the chat. There's no questions there as such. So listen, if you if you do think of something, I'm just going to put my email address in the chat. Uh, and if you want to drop me an email, we can arrange a Teams call. That's my email address there in the chat. Um, and I'll put it in the back of the slide rack as well so that you can find me. Um, and uh, if there's anything else in the meantime, you can always give us a shout uh, and we can go through any other queries you might have. Thank you very much for everyone for joining us this afternoon. We, we're finishing on the, the nose of 201 I have on my clock here. So it went a bit longer than I thought. Um, that's a learning point for me now moving forward. You're very welcome. Thank you so much for joining us and for being so attentive. And or if, if there's anything else comes to mind in the meantime, do uh, touch reach reach out to us, touch base, and we'll try and follow up with any other queries you might have. Okay, thanks very much. Thank you, Irene. Uh, just before thanks, we Irene. leave, I just wanted to let you all know that uh, we are going to have digital technologies webinar at the end of May, and we would like to see you there. If you'd like to join, more details to follow on Dasby social media. Thank you. Thanks, Elizabeth. Thanks very much. That's great. Okay, bye now. Bye, Alan. Um, thanks, William. See you, Alan. Thank you. Thanks very much. Bye.